Alright. Alright, I'm trying a little bit of a back shot here. I'm going to be working on these controls. I've mentioned in the live stream that I have to try and get those all done right, but it's a bit tight space and tricky. So I will be kind of walking you guys through what I'm doing here while I'm doing it so that you can hopefully see a little bit better what I'm doing. So I'm just going to start pretty much from the volume pot. The volume pot, um, I'll have this also kind of displayed on screen for you to see as well. I'm apologizing because I'm going to kind of be coming in and out of screen a bit and my hands will be covering, but I want you to see what I'm, as I'm kind of getting at stuff and, and, and whatnot as best I can from the shot. So to start off with, um, the volume pot you'll see here has one input that I've already jumper that jumps over to here. And then the other one is going to come from that same thing. Uh, it's going to be a, uh, I think it's a, oh, I'm trying to remember. I have, might have to look at the schematic, compare it, but it's a, it's a bright cap. And I can't read it from here. I think it's 300. Um, but let's look at the schematic really quickly. The bright cap is 300 picofarad ceramic. And I think I bought myself some of those as well. If you remember, I bought, I had all the wrong kinds of ceramics. There's 270 and there's 300. Cool. All right. So I have a 300 picofarad here, ceramic that I will um, put in and it's going to connect between this part and then down into that bright switch. And then the bright switch, um, um, that it goes to the middle of the bright switch and the bottom of the bright switch then kind of connects over to the center of the volume pot as well so that you're you know um, the basically the point there is that you either go through the volume pot or you bypass it around through the um, the capacitor and that's what a bright cap does is lets you just completely bypass a, at a specific frequency range that stuff so we shall um, uh, double check what I'm gonna actually I want to do I often try and double check this I'm gonna go to continuity mode the center one is the um, okay so all right so the with the switch down there it's basically off even though this is uh, a lot of times with this kind of switch you only need a, what's called a, a single pull single throw so see how there's three if you can see that oh my head's blocking the way sorry if you can see at this angle there are three separate posts on that uh, the center one is what would be either your input or output. In this case, it's going to be the um, output, I believe. But um, the center pin, your your signal... I'm sorry, let me think. I'm thinking that through. The input comes in through the center tap. Sorry, it's the input. The output, in this case, would go through the top. But I don't want that connected to anything because when the switch is down, it's just not engaged. But when you switch it up, that engages bright, which in this case happens to be the bottom switch. But that also kind of makes sense because if the lever is downward, this contact point that might be up is going to be upwards. And if you switch it upwards, this contact point would be downward. So you want to go to the down one. So I'm going to take this capacitor. I'm going to bridge between pin 1 and the center pin. So there we go. So that way it's there. It's kind of in line. Soldering it will look fine. But it's uh and then I will just connect a separate lead out of the bottom over to the uh, the center of the volume pot here as well. Now one of the things I noticed, I think I'd mentioned to you guys before, I'm not going to implement it in this one, but the deep switch uh, in the in the original the in the one that I looked at initially, I didn't order 270k resistors. I don't have them I didn't want to go and reorder them because I basically realized, oh, the 270K are only optional or we're only on the one of the two schematics. So I think they possibly help with popping, but I'm not positive, but they kind of jumper between the bright switch, the deep switch, and the jazz switch. So I'm not going to include those. And so for that purpose alone, I won't be needing to connect the 270K into the bottom of the bright switch. So I'll just need to jumper that. So I will do a small jumper. And this is where some of my spare leads that I have snipped out um, from all the other stuff, this one will work perfectly there because it just has to go from here down to there. So I will do that as well. So I will quickly strip the one side of this guy and get myself a sense of how, and this is, there we go. To about there. Let's just, I'll just do this. I'll strip both ends a little bit because it's close enough that I can carefully insert this guy and then bend it down a little bit and come up from the bottom. There we go. All right. 
All right, so let me solder both. Oh, whoops, my other lead came out here. This is the one that jumps over to the treble pot. So if you look at the actual schematic, the actual sound comes in to the treble pot, but then it also is jumped over here to the... Oh, I'm gonna have to flow that a little bit because I noticed before there's a hole for one lead, but there's a big enough hole for both. But the problem is, is that it's not... Um, there we go, it's not uh, fully. All right, so basically I do need to turn my fan on here so I'm not... Uh, smoking myself out but all right so let me get up here turn the fan on and i'll get in here and solder away all right that's all soldered down i can probably just snip out the stuff that was excess. And what I'm going to do now that I have that um, soldered there as well to make it look neat, I'm going to kind of give these a bit of a, a little bit of a angled pull to try and straighten them out and make them not so ugly there. All right, cool. So that is the volume pot. Next up would be, and the bright switch. Um, so next up over to that side is going to be the treble pot. So the treble pot, um, it does have a, let's see, I'm trying to look at that. There's a 22 meg resistor that connects to the center of the jazz pot, which we have here. And then the center of it has a 100K that does also connect over to the other side, or like so the, so the center of the jazz pot, it goes to the top of it on the one side. And I've got that one actually jumped already. I'll, I'll be kind of connecting those in a minute. I'm just trying to look through the other connections of the treble pot, make sure everything right. And the third part of the treble connects down and over to the 330 picofarad board one. So it's this one right in here. So, okay, so that's correct. So the treble pot is wired correctly right now as is. All right, so next will be the mid pot. And I'm trying to see... Oh, the middle pot, I remember, is uh, wired where we've connected into the center like it's supposed to be, but the other one just goes to ground. So I need to do a short ground lead connecting from the middle to the ground because all the ground is is a variable resistor on the middle on this guy so i've got a short lead of uh, wire that i can solder through it and then send it to ground and when i do my grounds i don't worry too much about um overexposing the wire because it's just a ground wire anyway so i get a, a little bit of extra lead grounded out like that of course i'm sitting right in front let me try and adjust my seat so i don't sit in the front as much um so effectively, I kind of will put a small lead through the hole and then wrap the other part of it around. I think I need a little bit more from bare wire. All right. So first order of business is going to be to, <coughs> excuse me, give myself a little hook that we can hook in and solder. And then once that's soldered, I can bend the rest of it around the... Uh, um, the um, grounding bus and ground it to that. So, there we go. I also have a bit of extra flux on this. I want to kind of clean up on that one. There we go. Much better. So now that that's had a chance to cool a bit, I will snip the ground the extra wire off. And I will make a solid physical connection. So as you've seen, I've now wrapped that around several times and I will put some solder on it. Got a clean tip in there. 
So as you're gonna see here, I, I've wet the tip a bit just so it gets contact, but I don't wanna do anything but actually flow solder into these areas once the area is hot enough. But here with this tin, like I was talking about before, it's actually accepting the solder really well and flowing it really well through the joint. So unlike the uh, other stuff that I was fighting over here, that just connected and flowed into the joints very well and gave us a nice soldered connection. So that is grounded. All right, middle pot done. Uh, the base pot, I think I did run. I ran a lead to the middle of the base pot, which comes off of the, this, this guy, but the, the input to it comes off of the jazz switch on the bottom. So the jazz switch over here, I'm having, I've already been having a kind of a battle getting that one little lead to it, but I need to jumper both of them and then connect it off to the base pot. So let's see if I've got a, a short lead, one of my, you know, cutoffs that's long enough. If not, I might have to get a separate one. I'm going to look at the distance here. I think this might do it. Let's just check and see. Part of my problem is fighting all these other wires that are part of this as well. Um, so if I were to strip the lead back of this guy. Okay, what I might do here, because this has been such a tricky one in there with all that narrow space, I might actually just undo this really quickly. Pull it out so that I can, um, I'll basically lift it, hopefully, anyway, we'll see if I can do this, lift it up above and then tighten it up and then put it in after the fact the way I want to. Then I'm not fighting these tight lead spaces and whatnot as much. So the first order of business is gonna be, where did that one go I just had? There it is. So this one, I will actually manually quickly do. Um, I'll just unhook this for a second. So this guy has to connect up through here and then bend down and through the other one. So I've got to kind of bend that down. Good to go. And then this will fold back under and it's gonna connect into the, uh, the first base connection, hopefully, if all goes well. But the next thing I wanna do, since I already have this guy out, is I'm gonna connect into the other things together into this that, does, that are supposed to go in here, one of which is this guy. It is the 100K resistor from the center of the treble pot to the top switch. So that was in the right spot. Haha, <laughs> whoops. Let's try that again. That does go here. So what goes to those middle two spots is a the 22 meg and the opposite side of the 22 meg switch of the same position both go to either side of that. So I just need to quickly do like I was doing, figure out where that 22 meg goes. Which means, it, I think it might be this guy. If it is, I wanna strip that lead and do a quick continuity test. So we'll just do that. I have more than I need anyway, but it's just a, all right, so that should be this guy. That's the right one. All right, so that one goes, first of all, I'm gonna want it to kind of come under this big one. That one goes to, and I'm gonna to wanna to give it room. So let's kind of run it to here, snip it off about here. Have a little extra, but I would rather have a little extra than run out of room because some of these other ones are already pretty tight. So 
All right, that one comes in and connects to the middle position. One of the things I found you have to be careful with these guys is because even though they have metal posts, inside of those metal posts are plastic posts, and those plastic posts can melt pretty quickly if you're not careful and are overly heating them. So you want to get in and get out quickly with these little guys. All right. Next up on this same switch is the 22 meg, which is this one also connects but over to the opposite side so to this one and then so i'll give myself a little room that guy to wrap around All right, there we go. And the last thing I need to go on this guy is, I've got a couple of ceramic 0.1 capacitors that are supposed to kind of be back to back like this, but that um, it basically jumps between the one to the other, and then we take the output from that. So what I'm trying to think of the way to do this might be I get something like this and I, I'm going to connect these two together like this but then I will put a bit of shrink tube up on that and melt it on after I get it soldered and that just jumpers the two together. And then what do you do when you jumper two capacitors together like this? What do you get? Uh, when they are in series it halves the capacitance. So this would be 0.005 in theory. When they are in parallel on the other hand it becomes doubled. So. They're the opposite of resistors. Resistor, resistors in serial add up, but in parallel they do a complicated formula, but when they're the same value they just have. So I'm going to quickly connect these guys together. So that they have a good soldered leg. And then we will snip that lead. Oh, I forgot to check it 30 minutes, so we've lost a little bit of what I did. But as a quick recap, I pulled this guy out, retightened it back down again now, and I've reconnected everything there. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one now, so I'm not fighting the same kind of a battle that I started with that one, so that it's a little easier to wire it up and then drop it into place afterwards. So. Uh-oh. Wow. Good. This one snapped. I don't know why or how, but it's popped off. I wonder if I just tightened it too tight. I'm not good on switches, am I? So this guy, somehow or another, um, this popped out and I don't understand why or what I might have done to do it, but it's broken. So I'm going to be going and grabbing another switch and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have a new switch. Luckily I have se several, but we will sort out maybe what we got to do to be careful about that in the future. But, um, all right. It may be that I tightened it down too tight, which caused some flexing in there, but anyway. Um, so, instead of worrying about that right now, though, I'm gonna try and cook this, connect this one up, which will be uh, it looks like there's a one, uh, 0 0.1, oh, it's a ceramic as well, but I, oh, I've got, actually, I remember I have some fenders that are left over as well, so I'll be using one of the fenders that came with it. It's 0 0.1 ceramic that connects effectively, it looks like, in to the top side here and then down to this middle one with a, uh, 
what is that, a one meg resistor, and then there's a 10K resistor to ground from some point as well. It's hard to see, let me zoom in a bit. So the one meg and the ceramic connect together into the top and through all the way across and jumper to that top part, and then that goes from the 10K to the ground. The other side connects, jumpers through the two sides over to the ceramic and one meg. So let's look, let me just double check. It could be, let me look at the schematic for that, for the deep switch. Okay, so for the deep switch, it looks like there is a one meg resistor and a 0.1 capacitor that connect to the two sides directly to a 10K to ground. Um, so we'll show a picture of that. So that means they're actually just kind of jumpered together. So this is the route to ground here. And then the two of them connect in here. Oh, okay, I got it. All right, I think I've got it now. So I need to get myself a one meg resistor. Let me double check our measurement with the volt ohm meter. Because I'm grabbing out of a bin that could accidentally have been, you know, something put wrong in there. 993, yep, we're good. All right. So, effectively, we are going to quickly take, and I'm going to... What I think I might do to make this a little easier, because I have long leads of the resistor, is I'll basically connect the resistor between these two leads and solder them together for the on the capacitor, because that's just the way they're supposed to work. And then I will be able to easily put one lead through the top and then around to the bottom and across. Um, so, yeah. I will do first the prep of this guy. So we'll do that, and I'll show you in just a second. Let's come back in a moment. All right, so you should be able to see there now that I've got the um, the resistor soldered to either side of that guy. I've just kind of put a U through this middle part like it shows on the thing, um, on the middle one. And then I'm gonna have a um, 10K coming through the top, connecting across to here, and then this guy will also loop back to that side as well. So we're gonna just solder this in really quickly. Oh, if it will hold still for me. Of course, it's falling over while I'm trying to do it, but I think we've got that now. So, now we will bring this guy up and around carefully to not jumper it. And what I'm gonna probably do first actually is I'm gonna run the 10K through here, and then I will connect this down into that side after the 10K's in so that we're not battling that actually now that I think about it. So, let me find my 10K resistor. I think that might be this guy. Yep, that's the 10K, and I sadly didn't have this in a um, carbon or carbon film, it's metal film, which means it'll be, what, in theory, cleaner sounding, but I don't like necessarily the cleaner sounding idea, but, you know, it is what it is. But, so I just need to uh, bend my lead in a kind of a hooking shape so that I can get through both of those easily. Uh, hmm, actually, if I'm gonna pull that off, I've gotta snip the lead a little bit closer. So what I'm trying to do here is kind of hook it like this. So I have to have a little bit less lead fighting me. So I will do this. And then we will go like this. And there we have it. So I will quickly also solder that guy. On the one side over here, but I have to solder the other side with that lead once I wrap it around. So we'll wait a second until I get this one done. All right, perfect. So now what we'll do is I can bend this guy down out of the way this guy up and through that hole. And now I have a connection there as well. But I will want to be careful not to let these leads touch these leads, so I have to give a little bit of separation. I'm gonna solder it first, and then I'll probably bend it down a little bit out of the way, so. Actually, now that I'm looking at it though, there has to be a way the signal comes into this, right? Where does the signal come in now? I'm missing that part somehow in my infinite wisdom. Let me um, 
Look at that. So that comes off of the output of the volume or of the bright switch, I guess, and the output of the jazz switch. Well, let's see. Oh, okay, so I might need to, uh, let me look at, uh, that's one of the things that I've had problems with with this guy, is like I told you before, there was two different versions of this, and this version is without. Okay, so, oh. Uh, Oh, that's a mid versus a deep. Oh, that's the difference. So I do need two 270 resistors. I will have to come back and fix that. Because this is, that, that's the difference. It's a mid versus a deep switch. I need to, um, I do need a, a, a couple of 270K resistors that will jumper into this guy on that bottom from the output of the jazz and from the output of the bright switch. So now that I'm, I've done most of that, I have it wrong. We'll have to come back after I get a couple 270K resistors. So I, uh, yeah, okay. So it's deep versus mid. Um, and honestly, I like the idea of a deep switch anyway. So we're gonna finish it since we started it. So that will have to stop for a bit and I'm just trying to think of what else. So, so let's skip past that switch now and quickly finish up with the um, other pots that we need. So let's look. Um, the base needs to have, oh, actually the base needs to have, oh, I didn't finish that wire that goes from the other switch here. Where is that one? Yeah, that's right there. This wire goes to the input of the base. Oh, oh you gotta be kidding me. This is the one that I was worried I didn't have enough length for. And guess what I don't have enough length for? <laughs> well, I have to pull that switch back out. All right, so um, we will, I'll come back in a minute. I have to pull this guy back out and fix that. All right, so what I realized is I can't really easily remove that guy now because I've soldered this in. So, I mean, I could, but I don't want to. So what, instead what I'm gonna do is I can rotate the base pot, but before I do that, I'm gonna get this 1.8K resistor to ground, that's supposed to be the ground resistor on that, and get it connected up correctly so that I can solder it in once I rotate that base pot around a little bit, and that measures 1.8K. So I will run. So, tight space is my enemy, but we will prevail. All right, where's my strip wires? Everybody should be happy now. I'm pulling out the strippers again. Oh, my joke is going to get old, I promise, but it isn't yet. The exact rotation of your pots is never an emergency thing. Now I will carefully wrap this guy around a couple of times and get my 1.8 to ground. So that is all connected up. Um, as I know, mentioned, I'm gonna have to get the right kind for this and I'm missing, I need two 270K resistors, which I don't have. Uh, so I'll get two of those. The only thing that's a bumper now is I also do need to try and connect um, one of these 270Ks to that bottom of this guy. Um, and I don't know how I'm gonna do that, we'll see. I might be able to kind of just, since it's a jumpered connection anyway, I might be able to reach down in and connect into that and then pull it over, but um, at any rate, all right. So let's see, what else can I work on now? The, the base is done. The OD level. So the OD level, I think one of the things I wanna look at with this is the uh, OD level, I have the first one connected correctly. 
that goes over to point A, which is, already done, we did that on another video, but the middle part of the OD level is another coax that goes over to um, a specific spot on the board, V2B grid resistor. So this is really gonna go from here all the way over to V2B grid resistor. I think that might go here, I'm trying to think. Let's look at that. Really quickly, the V2B grid resistor, I'm gonna zoom out a little. Okay, so this is this, this 180K resistor right here. Um, so I need to connect it in to this, that's not gonna be visible, but the other side, there's a, a line up here, it's gonna connect here. So that means I have to jump or one of these, another one of these big guys across from here to here. I have one, but I wanna do that one almost last because it will take up so much real estate of other things I might need to jump her. So it's gonna basically go from here all the way over to here, and that will see how much that's gonna be in my way. So I'll wait to do that one until near the end. But um, and then I think let's look. So let's skip that for now. And then the next one over is the um, ratio. And the ratio looks like it connects over to I'm trying to see where. Oh wait, did I do that one already? I did do that one. Those those th those are all connected. Okay, so those three, and that's grounded. Okay, so that the the entire ratio pot is hooked up correctly. The master volume. Connects. Oh, it looks like I might have the master volume, the top and the ground, but the middle wire, oh, it goes to the effects send and return loop. It's kind of hard to see what that does, but there's basically an effects send and return loop and that I haven't put in yet in the master volume. So there's gonna also need to be another one that comes out of this, this middle of this guy over to my effects send and return. So I'll have to get those jacks put in and drilled and set up. So I'll probably do that next here, but I'll do that off screen. All right, back in a bit. All right, we're back. I've got these two connected. I also took a little bit of time and, and fed this line down underneath and through the box so it comes up. And this will then connect into the um, input of this guy. So let me quickly strip back a little bit from that. And solder that guy in. So, um, the... Um, Effects loop is something that I hadn't had a chance to look at or do anything with yet, but we're getting it in now. Now, the only part about this effects loop that'll be a little bit of a bummer is that it is a passive effects loop. So it just cuts out at a specific point right after the preamp um, before it heads off to the, um, I think, phase inverter, if I remember right. Right before the phase inverter, we can double check on the schematic. I'll show that up here, but effectively, it isn't quite as good as a buffered tube effects loop, but it still allows you to Put effects in like reverb and whatnot later in the chain so and i have a buffered effects pedal most of them are so as long as you have the pedal kind of on then it can kind of handle that itself but it's better to have a buffered effects loop uh, all right so that's connected there then the way this is wired is it wants me to run um both of those grounds off to where where does that go it just says chassis it doesn't say which which one okay so it's probably not urgent to know exactly where we ground it as long as we ground it. So I'm just trying to think of a good spot to connect that ground in. Oh, I could connect it to the ground, maybe. I don't know, anyway, we'll, we'll get to the ground in a minute. Let me just connect the other connections. So I've got to connect in, of course you guys can't see what I'm doing, but you'll be able to see on the picture what I'm doing. So I'm gonna jumper from the switch. I gotta scroll back down so I can see where I was. The switch center jumps over to the other side and then connects off up to the yellow lead. Uh, of course, and this is one of the things with this layout that I have a lot of problems with is it just disappears behind the board and I don't see it coming out anywhere. So I don't know where the yellow lead went to exactly. Um, and so I will look at the schematic again. So the shows the connection from the input there to the set to the tip uh, the return is the one that has the switched one and the green yes connects to there the yellow 
Oh, it's supposed to come from the master of the, or the, from the master volume, I think, if I'm looking at that right. So let's double check. Um, let's see the master volume. Oh, that's, that's, okay. So that, that's just really kind of poorly done here because they show it brown on the top of it coming in and then it's yellow on the bottom, but that's from the master volume. So the master volume, I will want to run a, uh, a lead from the center of the master volume is going to run from the center of the master volume all the way over to this guy after we jump with them. So, uh, so this is the, if I'm understanding that right also, this is the send on the, it's not label on here, but the on the schematic, the switch jack is, I think, the um, switch jack is the return. So the send is this one, and then the return is here. So um, I'll just need to get now some lead that will connect uh, from the... Let me go back to that guy. We will check, connect a lead between the input of the one jumpers to the switch to the other and then off so of course i've got a lot of these little leads that work perfectly for jumpers um let me find a fairly short one because this is a very short jumper yeah i better stop the recording for a minute i'll be right back all right so i've got the effects loop wired in i didn't as i mentioned i wasn't going to necessarily show everything i was doing because it's just some straightforward um simple wiring connections um, but, um, basically this, the, these are now done. It doesn't show using a fancy coax for it. So I didn't, um, I just, um, uh, ran and then I round a grounding wire from the ground jumper straight over into this preamp ground clear over in the corner as well. So those two are now wired in and done. And, um, so I'm going to call this a good spot to stop for today. Um, I will, you know, have, hopefully get this edited up during the week, and then we'll, by Thursday we will come back and start doing some of the last stuff as well. I'll kind of prep for that and figure out what else is left. But um, I've got, um, for example, I've got this negative feedback. I've got to fix the the speakers. I, I believe when I was looking at them, they rewired them in some weird way that's wrong. So I'll have to kind of make sure those are wired correctly, and then connect the negative feedback into it, um, and such and such. So. Uh, getting a lot closer, but uh, I'm definitely uh, worn out at this point. So we'll call that good for today. And uh, thanks everybody for joining. Please give a like, a subscribe, a thumbs up. Click that little bell icon if you want to keep updated of all of my new videos as they come out. Thanks everybody. Cheers.